Town of Oakville, and I even have a working microphone. Madam Clerk, we have no regrets. And uh, Council, I wonder if you're, there are any declarations of pecuniary interest. Madam Clerk, I see none. And uh, Council, how would you feel about resolving into Committee of the Whole? Councillor Hutchins moves. Councillor Lapworth seconds. All in favor? Opposed? We are resolved into Committee of the Whole. Council, you have on your agenda, I think, three. Um, open consent items and one confidential consent items. Uh, is there a mover for the consent items? Councillor Adams moves the consent items. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. The consent items are adopted, all four. That brings us to our first public hearing item, and this is the public meeting report and draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment for the Trinity United Church at uh, 1250 McCraney Street East. And the recommendation before council is that the comments from the public with respect to the draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment applications submitted by Trinity United Church be received. And we have a presentation for the public so they understand what council has studied before <coughs> this meeting. And please begin. Good evening, Mayor Burton, members of council. This evening you'll find my staff report on page 13 of your agenda. This is a statutory public meeting for a draft plan of subdivision and a zoning bylaw amendment submitted by Weston Consulting on behalf of Trinity United Church. These applications were received on March 7th of this year. They were deemed completed on April the 6th and we held a public information meeting on May the 11th. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to obtain any further public input related to these applications. Staff at this time are not making a recommendation and are just asking Council to receive the staff report. The subject lands are located generally west of Trafalgar Road, south of McCraney Street East, and north of Sewell Drive. The subject property is municipally known as 1250 McCraney Street East. The intent of the draft plan of subdivision is to create three residential lots on the southwest corner of the church property facing Sewell Drive. The intent of the zoning bylaw amendment is to uh, rezone these three lots to an RL5 zone to permit the development of detached dwellings on each lot. The balance of the site will remain uh, for, as a place of worship. The church property itself is approximately 1.2 hectares in size and is irregular in shape. It has approximately 133 meters of frontage on McCraney Drive and 166 meters on Sewell Drive. The proposed lots are approximately 15 meters wide and they vary in uh, area from 685 meters squared to 890 meters squared. There are no proposed changes to the church structures on the site. The church property, uh, the church parking lot, however, would need to be reconfigured in order to accommodate the three proposed lots. When this parking lot is reconfigured, the, uh, the parking requirement for the church will still comply to the zoning bylaw. In terms of the livable Oakville plan, the site is designated as low density residential as shown on Schedule I central land use. The official plan does permit single detached dwellings within this designation and the applicant does intend to conform with the official plan. The site is currently zoned CU or community use. The applicant is requesting a site specific RL5 zone, which is a residential low density zone, to implement the land use and establish regulations in order to allow the site to be developed as these, for these three lots. A public information meeting was held on May the 11th, which was attended by the ward councillors and four residents in the area. Issues raised at the public information meeting related to on-street parking, tree removal, and side yard setbacks. Staff have received one letter of concern from a resident and that is attached as Appendix A to your staff report. Matters to be considered within a future recommendation report will consist of conformity with the livable Oakville policies. We'll look at density and intensification, compatibility with the existing neighborhood, and tree removal. Planning staff will continue to review and analyze the application and the merits of the application and all technical matters that have arisen through the, re, uh, through the circulation. Staff will also take into consideration any issues raised this evening. Uh, staff will also bring forward a recommendation report I'm expecting in the, in the early fall. In conclusion, staff put forth this following recommendation for your consideration and are available to answer any questions. 
Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Grant has a question. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm referring to the uh, letter on Appendix A, which is on page 24. It, it mentions, and, and this came after our, uh, our public meeting, but it mentions that the uh, wasteland, as they call it, at the northwest corner would be better for uh, development. Um, does staff have any, have any conversation about that? Um, through your worship to the councillor, uh, that is something that we will address in our future recommendation report. Um, to have the three lots in that location would require quite a bit of tree removal. Um, so we will be looking um, at that option and we will report back to council with respect to that. So there would be greater tree removal if we looked at that area than we would be at the southern location? That is correct. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Councillor Noll. Quick question, I'm, I'm hopefully uh, staff can answer it, but are you aware of uh, whether or not the uh, contract between the church and the medical arts facility beside Town Hall has uh, concluded or whether that's still ongoing for parking? Through you, Your Worship, um, the medical, in the past, the medical um, office across the street did lease land or did lease parking from the church uh, for their overflow parking. That has since expired. Um, through rezoning across the street, parking was uh, accommodated through uh, a shared uh, parking area between the apartment building. So yeah, the church does no longer provide parking for the medical use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Another question, Councillor Grant? Um, given uh, public information, I'll move the uh, recommendation for receipt. Thank you, Councillor Grant. I'd just like to check if there are any registered delegations for this. Yes, we do have a couple of reg registered delegations for this item. First registered delegation is Diane Kalina, who is president of the Trinity United Church Council. Ms. Kalina, would you like to? Um, Diane and I were going to switch places. Diane speaking on behalf of Trinity United, and I'm from Weston Consulting. My name is Tula Nasina, so I'd be the next one, I believe, on the list. Okay. So, are you? I gather that you might like to um, express your opinion of the report. Uh, yes, um, in terms of it's being accepted as information with respect to uh, the location of the lots, we have lo we had looked at the um, the property extensively with the church, and again, it was the location of the three lots for residential in the south uh, southern portion of the site takes advantage of the longest frontage that there is on the property and also ensures that some of the treed area is preserved. And we feel that um, in terms of what we're putting forward is consistent with the provincial policies. It conforms to the region of Halton official plan by adding to the residential supply in the area. Uh, proposed development is permitted under the Livable Oakville uh, low density residential designation. We are proceeding with single family dwellings, very consistent with what is in the neighborhood today. And it's, um, contributes towards new housing stock to the community and provides appropriate um, and compatible intensification, we feel, in terms of, I, don't, I didn't want to repeat with what Lee had already said. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. And um, Diane's going to be speaking on behalf of the church. Thank you. Council, Diane. Thanks. Um, I've got four slides, Is it, are they somewhere? Help is on the way. Help is on the way. I'll just start while he's pulling it up. That's the one, yes. My name's Diane Kalina. I'm uh, president of the church council here at uh, Trinity United Church. I'm just going to take three minutes and I give you a quick presentation on the church, the situation we are in that precipitated this project, and of course how we intend to use the funds. Trinity is a very small congregation, about 70 con families, about 130 individuals. We welcome everybody. For example, you don't need to be a member of our church, or any church for that matter, to take communion. The United Church was one of the first to allow gay marriages. We are in the process of revitalizing. Our main initiative involves improving our reach out to the community. Our congregation has gradually become more ethnically, eth ethnically diverse, and we're also seeing more people who are younger and younger than the retirement age that get involved with our church. 
It's not that we don't do external projects and programs now, we do. But we're a very open-hearted congregation and we know we can do more. A very few of the examples we are currently doing are listed here. An Oakville-centered project is our White Gifts program, which is run by our own Linda Roberts, who's won several awards, including the Community Spirit Award and a Rotary Club Award for this work. Our White Gifts program coordinates with other agencies, such as the Children's Aid Society, to assist underprivileged families. Uh, an example of an internationally funded project is our Roof for the Roofless, which is a long-running project in India. We also had a fundraiser last month for a refugee family, and as recently as last week, uh, held a garage sale to raise funds for Fort McMurray. So basically, the situation in a nutshell is that our costs are increasing and our donations are not increasing at the rate needed to expand our reach and offer more services. Our church is a vital part of the fabric of our community. Many organizations rely on us to provide a reasonably priced place to rent. Our renters include Alcoholics Anonymous, which really just takes up a collection each week to pay, give the church, and community groups such as the Oakville Children's Musical Theatre. We even offer our church to congregations of different denominations. A Seventh-day Adventist church currently rents our facilities weekly. We have about 10 to 15 different groups renting each year. So what are we using the funds for? Rest assured that we have the support of our church hierarchy. Halton Presbytery actually loaned us the money to use to hire Weston Consulting to fund this lengthy and expensive process. As it works in the United Church, all funds from the sale of the lands will go directly to our own local church. It does not have to be given to some central church body, nor does it have to be spread among other United Churches. We're not planning any large building projects or renovations, just some small interior renovations. The majority of funds will be used to fund programming and make ourselves more financially stable. A good example of what we are doing is that last week, we hired a children and youth ministry developer. This is a brand new position. The job entails going out into the community and discovering what needs are out there and what we'd be able to help address rather than to only serve our current families. Thank you for your attention and for your consideration of our project. Thanks. And thank you very much. I'm very glad you brought that message to us. It's uh, very helpful to have the context. Welcome. Councillor Grant has a question for you, and I guess Councillor Duddock too, but we'll go to Councillor Grant first. Well, well, first, thank you for your service. I, I've, I've been to several of the uh, um, touchstone events at your church. Uh, you, you've had a lot of milestones. It's a wonderful church. Thank and, you. and thank you for not um, taking up the, the tree space uh, <laughs> and, and using part of your parking lot. Uh, but I guess part of the question that most people would have is, taking up part of your parking lot, are you losing anything from the congregation? Would, would that be more traffic in the area or more parking on the streets? No, actually, because we used to, I think as uh, Councillor Noel pointed out, before we had already expanded our parking lot to accommodate renting it out to the uh, Trafalgar Medical Building, we actually have more parking than we really could ever need. <laughs> so so it, it, it isn't a problem at all. Well, I did notice you had a fitness boot camp in the parking lot yes. this afternoon. I hope to join soon. Thank and you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Duddick and then Councillor Noel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much through you, uh, Your Worship. Just wanted to acknowledge that I think similar to what you're experiencing at Trinity is much like many of the other congregations within the community and how to do it sensitively yet still be true to the mandate and the vision that you're trying to, uh, to work with then. So well done in terms of being very sensitive to that and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Noel. Thank you. Uh, just following up on a question from Councillor Grant regarding parking, um, I, I, I noticed that uh, you indicate, I think you said you have 70, at the slide went by, 75 families. So is that, is that what you said in the... That's how many that are, are members of the church, sure. not necessarily come on Sunday. No, I know how that works. <laughs> um, so, so obviously the parking lot, you know, you get some laughter from the congregation. <laughs> yes. um, so obviously the parking lot is sufficient for... Uh, Sunday services and for most of the church family business, but mm -hmm. what about uh, events such as, uh, is the children, um, the children's musical theater still there? My son used yes. to be involved in that. Yes. I remember the parking lot was always very congested when it was, uh, the, the parents were 
crossing. when they're dropping off yeah. and, and taking and, and leaving. But they, they mostly just drive in, drop off, and they don't stay for Are that. you finding that, that even with your, your events, that, that do you believe that with, even with your events and your rentals, you will have sufficient parking spaces? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Clerk, uh, would you call the next delegation if there is another delegation? Then I'll ask the public here if anyone else has any information for council to consider on this matter. Would you please come forward, sir, and share your information? And would you introduce yourself, please, for the clerks? Yes, my name is Todd Sullivan. I live directly across the street from where this proposal is to take place. I've lived in this town since I was three years old. One of the reasons I bought that house was because the church was across the street, and one would assume that in my experience, most churches don't pack up and leave or sell their property off into pieces. Currently, if you look out my front window, I look at nothing but trees, green space. And for the heart of the city, that's a rare thing to see. Now you're going to ask me to look at the front of three houses that are probably larger than the houses that are currently there, taking away a view that I thought I was purchasing and could depend on. Beyond that, there are a number of occasions where the parking lot is at least two-thirds full, currently, more on a one-day-a-week basis at that level, but so I don't see how parking wouldn't be an issue at times. Not to mention, where is all the construction equipment going to be stored? Sewell is narrow as it is, where you put those speed bumps in, creates tr parking issues for people further down the street, just with a little tiny barrier. What happens when you start parking all this construction equipment? We're going to look at mud, traffic delays, much more than any of us on the street really want. I don't know how many people are here today, but I want to voice completely. I'm dead set against those houses being built directly across the street from me, and it will directly affect my quality of life for probably at least a year, and beyond that if you take into account the view. That's all I really have to say. Thank you very much for sharing your information. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Grant. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, ju I'm just looking at the map. What, what trees do you look upon when? If I look at my front door, right. conveniently right where the postal boxes got put that okay. I wasn't excited about in the first yeah, place. Nobody likes the CBMs, I get that which I find ironic are very easily to be moved for this project, but that's another issue. If I look directly across the street, the mailboxes are slightly to my left. I'm looking at the green hill, the large trees that would block this gentleman's house here. I can almost not even see his house. Okay. All the houses that back the border of all the, um, the border, the church property, right? I can see a small view of their, I guess, office building, being the church. But lit quite literally, I see nothing but green. And those trees, they were tall when I was three years old. So they're you know, 40, 50, 60 years old. And you're going to start cutting them down too. And I know from personal experience in business, Oakville normally protects their trees pretty tight and have strong rules against that. And, you know, it's usually, you know, far more costly to cut down trees when they're mature, which is probably one of the reasons why they're proposing it on the parking lot side, opposed to the other side. Because there's more trees there. There's more trees there, but there's also more roadway, less track, uh, because you have two lanes on McCraney plus the bike paths. In essence, you're at least 40 feet across, right, twice the road distance across than where you want to build. So when traffic starts coming into play, what, us residents are going to have to wait until a bulldozer moves out of the way to get out of our neighborhood. So, like, once again, I'm directly across the street. You're welcome to come to my house. I'll show you the view. I'm in the area often, trust Right? Me. So it's like I see nothing but green and just a small portion of the gentleman's house over here, and literally it's just a wall of green. Okay. You, you realize, though, and, and I... I'm trying to ask a question, so I'm not trying to make an argument, but you realize that if, if Trolley Trinity loses the land, this entire property could be redeveloped into 
a housing project. At which time I would likely look at moving or turning my property into a student rental of some sort. Right. Because, you know, I bought that space for, like, that was a huge portion. If anyone's familiar with the homes on that end, my home used to be a rental property and has required a lot of fixer-up money. Right? I could have bought new, because as you know, for the last 15 years, we've basically been living in development in Oakville. Mm -hmm. I tried to avoid that by buying in an area that didn't have land around it to develop anymore. Right. Right? And yes, if the church goes, you know, maybe you build something bigger, right? Maybe you take over the whole thing. Well, we, we don't build. But, we, we have well, no choice. We, I mean, maybe those things come property. to you. Right? But at the same <clears throat> token, you know, they have a lot of activity in there. I don't say anything about the 6 a.m. workout activities that if you have to, don't want to have your air conditioning on and crack your window, that will wake you up at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, right? The same activity that you mentioned happens later on in the afternoon. That's the later okay. chapter of that. And, and if you have a complaint, please send right? it to us. We and can it's respond. like, I know they, you know, their church are trying to make money, right? I can close my window and it doesn't aggravate me that much in the morning, especially since the bullhorn thing that initially started with it went away. Right, but and again, if there's bullhorns at six a.m. in the morning, please send me an email. Mm. Um, well, that stopped relatively quickly. The bullhorn thing, not no, gonna lie. nevertheless. But but my concern is that if we don't at least give um, a fighting chance to Holy Trinity, um, then basically the land might go completely. And my thought is, you pick your battles. Well, if that were the case, then I would ask that you put it on the north side of the property, where the or the trees are. east side of the property. Okay. But the east side of the property is probably the last part that would be looked at because it's right by the intersection and is the furthest distance away from city services to connect to. That would be my guess. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, then uh, <coughs> I beg your pardon? No, we've, we've heard from you. It's not a debate, it's, it's information for council. Um, so I'll accept, uh, sir, are you interested in sharing information with us? Yeah, just briefly. Uh, Could you come in to the microphone so we can hear you and introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm uh, Jim Pally, 217 Sewell. I wrote that letter that's in the appendix there. I just wanted to comment on the, uh, the optional uh, forest area. It, there are some lovely mature trees in that uh, forest. However, you can't even access that. It, to appreciate that forest area, it, it's total brush. You can't even walk in there. It's uh, the thick, thick uh, briar trees that have grown up, uh, leaf piles, uh, dead branches are just uh, thrown in there. So uh, there used to be a little walkway through there, but that's long been abandoned. So it, that's why I refer to it as a wasteland. Albeit, there are some lovely trees in there. I won't deny that fact, but no one really can appreciate them, whereas the green trees that are on Sewell are much more publicly observable. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you very much for that clarification. Appreciate you taking the time. I'll accept Councillor Grant's motion now to receive the information. Councillor Knoll? I have a question for staff on redirect. Well, please ask your question. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to explore the parking situation just a little bit more because I want to understand the numbers uh, better. Um, in the report, it refers to the fact there are 95 parking spaces. That's current day, correct? Uh, yes. So what is, uh, if the building were to be built today based on the, um, the, the lot coverage, et cetera, what would the requirement be for parking spaces? I don't have the number for you. Um, I know I did the analysis and I talked to zoning specifically about that. Um, I can, we can have that within the future recommendation report, that analysis for you. Um, but my understanding is that there is more in excess parking there than is required for the church use. Um, and with the removal of the parking, the, plot, the uh, church property will still comply with the bylaw. So um, based on, on the proposal before us, well, how many spaces are actually removed? Uh, I might re defer to the applicant. She may have that number more at hand. If that's okay with you, Your Worship. Uh, 
currently there's 85 spaces and it's being re reduced down to um, 56 spaces. So the report says 95 spaces and you're saying 85? I think it's 85 that they currently have on site. A rounding error. Um, so how many will it become? Um, the quick math to that is Loss of some 20 odd spaces. Okay, um, Councillor. Through you, I'd, I'd request that staff bring that information yeah. back in the in the uh, final yeah. report. In, in terms of process, it might be sufficient for your purposes just to um, signal to staff that that you are interested in having a detailed parking yeah. analysis in the recommendation report. Yeah, that's sort of what I spoke over you on. Okay. <laughs> I apologize for that, by the way. So, yeah, I would like that very much. If staff could do that, that'd be great. Thank you, Worship. So then the motion is only to receive, as everyone understands, this is not a decision night on this matter. This is an information gathering night. So all those in favor of receipt, any opposed, and that carries. Thank you, everyone. We now turn to... Uh, we now turn to uh, item number five, the public meeting and recommendation report, the temporary use bylaw expansion extension for the Vic Hadfield Golf Center. And Trish Collingwood will summarize for the public the report that council has studied on this matter. Good evening, Mr. Mayor <clears throat> and members of council. The report tonight can be found on page 25 of tonight's agenda. The purpose of this report is to provide Council with a recommendation on an application for the extension of a temporary use bylaw submitted for the Vic Hadfield Golf Center to permit the lands to be used as a golf um, center and driving range as a temporary use for an additional three years. Sorry, there we go. The property is located at 340 Burnham Thorpe Road, which is situated at the southeast corner of Trafalgar and Burnham Thorpe Road intersection. The applicant is requesting approval to permit the lands to continue to be used as a golf, for a golf center with a driving range as a temporary use for an additional three years. This property has been used as a golf center with its associated uses since 2001. A temporary use bylaw has been in, in effect on this property since 2001 and extensions have been granted in 2004, 7, 10, and 13. The current temporary use bylaw expires on July 2nd 20, of this year and should council approve the proposed extension, it would uh, be in effect until July 2nd of 2019. No other changes to the existing temporary use bylaw are proposed. The subject site is designated. Thank you. The subject site is designated as Trafalgar Urban Core for in the North Oakville East Secondary Plan. The North Oakville East Secondary Plan has a policy that allows the continuation of existing uses which do not conform to the provisions of the plan. The Vic Hadfield Golf Center has been in operation since 2001 and it is appropriate to allow the property to be used for this purpose until such time as there are redevelopment proposals brought forward for the property. This property is intended to develop in the second phase of the secondary plan and plan of subdivision approvals, registrations, rezonings, um, site plans and construction are currently underway in um, phase one, a number of them are, and at present phase one is not yet complete. So phase two is still a number of years away. The property is, is zoned existing development and has a temporary use performance zone two on it. The zoning of the lands permits the existing use as a golf driving range, a sales and pro shop, and an accessory storage structure. The temporary performance zone also provides regulations for lot area, floor area, the number of driving tees, and the amount of parking on site. As mentioned previously, the existing temporary performance zone expires next month, and this extension will give it another three years to 2019. 
As there have been numerous extensions to the temporary use bylaw and no public interest shown on the application over the number of years that it has continued, the public meeting requirement has been combined with this recommendation report and will satisfy the public meeting requirement for this application. Staff put for, forth the following recommendation for Council's consideration. That the temporary use bylaw extension application submitted for the Vic Hadfield Golf Centre be approved and that bylaw 2016-057 to permit the lands to be used for a golf centre as a temporary use for a period of three years be passed. Thank you. This, includes, this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Collingwood, for the presentation. I think it's important for the public to know what we're doing. They might be watching, and if we, you know, if we put it through without an explanation, they wouldn't have had a chance to know that this is a continuing uh, pattern that, that uh, makes total sense. Are there any members of the public with information for council on this matter? <clears throat> Mr. Fay, are you in support? Yes, I Thank you. Um, are, do, does the, is there a motion? This is in the Ward 6, if I recall. Councillor Adams. If there are no further members of the public before us tonight, then I'm happy to move the staff recommendation. It hasn't caused any issues over the last few years, and I'm happy for it to continue in the interim. Thank you, uh, Councillor. All those in favor? Councillor Lischina? Councillor Lischina, ask your question. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, with respect to the golf course currently, are they allowed to spray in that area, the, the uh, grass, considering there's a school right across the street? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I am not, I'm not positive on that answer, and I will have to speak with our environmental policy and section to determine whether they are permitted to do so. Shall I call the vote? All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried and approved, and thank you for your, for your attendance, Vic. Uh, that brings us now, Council, to public hearing item number six. We have a presentation from Heinz Heck, and this is the public meeting and recommendation report for a town-initiated housekeeping amendment for Winston Park West employment lands. Mr. Heck, we're all ears. Thank you, Your Worship, members of council. Just in terms of background and an overview of the application, uh, on uh, April 18th of this year, council approved a draft plan of subdivision and zoning amendment uh, for an employment uh, draft plan of subdivision at, located at the north west corner of Upper Middle and Highway 403. The uh, zoning bylaw which was passed that evening contained a mapping error and the mapping error had the effect of removing the parkway belt and utility zoning category from a portion of the draft plan of subdivision shown in red. The effect of the revised bylaw which is before council tonight would be to restore the previous parkway belt and utility zoning uh, from a portion of the draft plan of subdivision. The revised zoning bylaw would only affect Block 10 and Street B and would not affect the uh, permitted uses or regulations contained in the original bylaw. Staff have contacted the owners of uh, Glen Burnie School to ensure that they're aware of the revision and to confirm that there would be no uh, zoning impacts to the regulations as it affects the school. In conclusion, Your Worship, uh, the revised zoning bylaw is a staff-initiated housekeeping zoning revision. Uh, staff recommend approval uh, of the revised bylaw, and the revised zoning bylaw implements a draft plan of subdivision, which is in conformity with the uh, livable Oakville plan. That concludes my presentation, Your Worship. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Heck. Are there any questions? Councillor Adams has a question. I just note that we've got a uh, note here from Enbridge I presume, from my reading of it, has no impact um, on the recommendation. Through you, Worship, uh, yes, that's correct. The, uh, the conditions of draft approval address the, uh, the Enbridge, uh, TransCanada, and uh, Union Gas requirements. 
Thank you very much. If there are no members of the public here, then I'm happy to move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Are there members of the public with information for Council on this matter? I see none. All in favor? Opposed to Finney, and that is adopted. That brings us to our discussion items. And uh, first one is item number seven in the agenda, the notice of intention to demolish at 129 Douglas Avenue. <coughs> and Susan Shoffert has a uh, synopsis of this for the public. But as the public will understand, Council is already familiar with Thank you, Your Worship, and members of Council. Uh, the application before you is a notice of intention to demolish for a property that is listed on Oakville's Register of Properties of Cultural Heritage Value or Interest at 129 Douglas Avenue. Uh, due to the 60-day time limits required by the Ontario Heritage Act, we are required to make a decision on this application by June 20th of this year. The property was originally added to the Heritage Register as staff at, and the Heritage Committee and Council had determined that it showed potential cultural heritage value for its circa 1903 four square style frame house. Uh, as part of the notice in of intention to demolish process, staff and members of the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee have completed several site visits to the property and Heritage Planning staff have also completed a detailed research report which is included in your agenda package. Uh, the owner of the property also provided staff with a historic photo of the property circa 1961, which was shortly after her parents took possession of the property in the late 1950s. The review of the property against Ontario Regulation 906, which is what defines cultural heritage value, showed minimal heritage value for the residents, which we actually determined to be built closer to 1910 rather than 1903. Uh, some limited heritage value for its association with the historic Brantwood subdivision, although there were no individually significant owners of the property discovered. And in terms of its contextual value, while the property is historically and functionally limit, uh, linked to the area, it is not considered to be a significant landmark within the community. Uh, staff's review and the uh, recommendations supported by the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee are therefore to remove the property from the Oakville Register of Properties of Cultural Heritage Value or Interest, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Um, are there questions? Councillor Hutchins, did you have a question? Um, no, uh, basically I'd like to just move it. Thank you. Are there members of the public with information for Council on this matter? Councillor Hutchins has moved the recommendation. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Or un unless you're up next. Yes. You're a double hitter tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, this is item number eight. The historic stone wall at 1028 Lakeshore Road East. And this is a closure surplus and conveyance. And uh, Ms. Shepard will summarize this for the public. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the application before you tonight, or rather the report, is a joint report um, by heritage planning staff and legal staff. Um, I'll uh, certainly endeavor to give you a good summary of what we're proposing for the site, and if there's any specific or technical questions regarding the conveyance, um, I may uh, ask the town solicitor to assist me with answering them. The property at 1028 Lakeshore Road East is designated under the Ontario Heritage Act already. Um, what this map shows you is the location of the property parcel with the green bar being the location of the historic stone wall in question, which falls partially onto privately owned property and partially onto town owned property. The purpose of the report before you tonight is a proposed amendment of the heritage designation uh, for 1028 Lakeshore Road East um, based on the conveyance of the land from the town to the private uh, property's ownership. Uh, this is the town's preferred solution to convey the lands that the stone wall sits on as it does ensure that the stone wall will be maintained uh, by the property owner who is very supportive of the application. Just a couple of photos which I would like to note were taken in April um, despite the snow uh, to show you the, the stone wall and its proximity to the house. The stone wall, while we weren't able to find um, the exact historic uh, construction date for it, certainly has been in existence for many, many years and contributes to the overall character 
of Lakeshore Road as well as to the character of the property at 1028 Lakeshore Road East. The recommendation before you is a rather wordy one, but essentially what we're asking council to do is to amend the, the heritage designation bylaw to include the stone wall um, following the conveyance of the lands to the owner of 1028 Lakeshore Road East. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Councillor Hutchins, do you have a question? Uh, no, again, I'm happy to move it forward. Uh, thank you. Councillor Lischina, have you a question? Uh, thank you, Susan. So you, you indicated that the current uh, property owner is supportive of taking on the um, looking after this wall. So if that property owner sells, it would there's language saying that the next owner also has to do that? Uh, through you, Your Worship, yes. Once the, uh, the uh, designation bylaw is amended, amended it would include um, all of the lands. Okay. And so um, the, the current property owner has, in fact, actually been maintaining the wall during his ownership of the property, which has been for many years. And he'd like to ensure its uh, long-term protection. Councillor Ilgar. So to be clear, it will be then registered on title for sure? Through you, Your Worship, yes. Thank you. That's great. Are there any members of the public with information for Council on uh, Councillor Giddings? Thank you, Ms. Murray. I'd just like to say what a wonderful solution the owners of the property have shown uh, over the past number of years their desire to preserve and look after the wall, have they not? Uh, most definitely. At their own cost. So I think it's a delightful solution and glad to see it's going to be in such caring hands. Shall I put the question? All in favor? Opposed to Penny? And that is carried. <clears throat> All right. That brings us to the advisory committee minutes from Heritage Oakville. And um, there's numerous items here. And we have a delegation on one. And the delegation is for <coughs> B, 6B. And that is the 417 Union Street. So, Council, I would, I would propose that we dispatch the other part and then deal with the delegated part. And Councillor Duddick is moving the balance. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Opposed to any? They are adopted. And that turns our attention now to 6B. And uh, perhaps, Madam Clerk, you could call the delegation. Pardon? Uh, I think the delegation. Is there a delegate here? Yes, so I call Mr. Fernando. Welcome, sir. Please uh, approach the uh, microphone there and share your information with us. Yeah, my name is uh, Bimal Fernando. I'm the owner of uh, 417 Union Street. Uh, just to give you a uh, a uh, little background what happened for last year. Uh, I have been working on this project since July of 2015, uh, trying to build a house for the family. Uh, prior to this, uh, prior to the heritage meeting approval, uh, took place May the 24th, uh, I, had f I had few pre-meetings with some of the community members, um, sorry, the uh, committee members of the heritage, and I was told uh, they are not uh, happy with the design, and I was asked at the time um, to change, and I met the uh, the committee a few times after, uh, and then we redesigned the whole house. And I came up with 3.6% uh, extra lot, lot coverage. Uh, so now we are about 3.6% extra lot coverage. Uh, what I'm still struggling to understand is, uh, according to my knowledge, uh, we still have the old rules in place. And uh, my neighbor uh, got a approval last year 4.9% uh, 
extra lot coverage, and I was told that I can get 3.6% with the same rules. So I'm struggling to understand, and I'm asking you to consider and give me a reasonable decision. All right, well, thank you very much for your information. Are there questions of the delegation? Thank you, sir. So is it Ms. Shepard who will present again? Oh. Carolyn, welcome. Thank you, Mr. What Mayor and members of council. Here? So I have a presentation that might uh, clarify things a little bit. This is a presentation that was done to the Heritage Oakville Committee on May 24th. Uh, so the Heritage Permit application is for 417 Union Street. You can see it here uh, within the Heritage Conservation District. It's the larger gray property on Union Street here. And the application was to demolish the existing house in the property and to construct a new two-story house with attached garage. This is the existing house here um, as seen about last year. So this house here is not considered to be of heritage value. It's not considered to be a property that contributes to the heritage district. So staff have no problems or any concerns about the removal of this house. The, but the heritage permit application um, is really surrounding the design of the new house. So again, they're just, just giving you a bit more context uh, where the arrow is pointing up. That's where the property is behind these trees. And this is the plan of the house that's being proposed by the owner. Um, so again, you can see here, this is the lot here, and we've got the house in gray in the plan. This is the front elevation that would be facing onto Union Street. So it's a two-story brick house with some stone along the bottom. Um, it's got a lot of low slope roofs, uh, simple wood trim, a lot of details that are uh, influenced by the arts and crafts design, which is a style that's seen throughout the Heritage Conservation District. Uh, wood doors and multi-paned windows that are also consistent with what's found within the district. This is the rear elevation. So again, same type of materials, some French doors in the back. The east elevation, and here you can see this is the garage. It is set back from the front of the house, which is always a concern. Uh, within the Heritage District, we want to make sure that the garage is pushed back further from the front elevation. So here we have the front porch and the garage is pushed back to here. And then this is the west elevation, again, a large brick house with a stone chimney and stone base. Just to give you a bit of background, um, the, the process that Mr. Fernando was referring to, there were several designs, and these were the main ones. So the initial design that came in had a lot of different styles, a lot of different details, different materials, um, lots of different types of windows. We wanted to see a style that was a little bit more simple, a little bit more humble, one that really um, met the character of the district. And so we worked, worked with uh, the owner and his architects, as well as a few members of the Heritage Committee to do that. This is another rendition, which you can see is a bit simplified, um, but staff still had some concern that the house was uh, a little bit too elegant and too formal um, for the Heritage Conservation District. And during this time, the house was made smaller as well. Uh, the garage was push pushed back further too. And then this is the final product that came through in the Heritage Permit application. So again, you can see that the roofs have a lower slope on them as opposed to the higher pitch roofs you saw before, something that is more characteristic of the types of houses in the, in the district. Uh, materials are simplified, windows and doors more simplified to be a little bit more, again, humble uh, to meet the, the character of the district a little bit better. And here we have um, a view showing all of Union Street. So this is the house um, that is currently under construction. It's about finished now on the corner of Union Street. Uh, and then here we have the proposed house and then the two existing properties between. So in terms of the collaboration, we had several months of collaborating with the applicant, uh, their architect, as well as a few members of the Heritage Committee. And again, like I said, we worked to simplify the design. Uh, staff felt that in the end, the massing and design materials proposed in the application were compatible and met the guidelines. We also felt that there was sufficient space around the house. They had increased the setbacks more than uh, zoning required to just give a little bit more breathing space around the house. 
and we felt that it was consistent with other buildings approved in the neighborhood. The one thing uh, where they did not meet zoning was the lot coverage. So the owners are requesting a 28.6% lot coverage, whereas 25% is permitted. As part of the heritage permit application process, we don't look specifically at numbers uh, when it comes to um, variances like this. Of course, that's left out to the committee of adjustment. But the changes that are required or the design that's required uh, requires these types of variances we do look at. So we want to make sure that the building isn't too bulky, too tall, um, too forward or too back on the property so that it is in keeping with the, the character of the district. So staff felt that despite these numbers, uh, that the building still had a design that was compatible with the Heritage Conservation District. Now to speak to the guidelines which Mr. Fernando uh, referenced, we have two district plans that we are looking at. Um, this is where a bit of the confusion comes into place. We have the original district plan which was created in 1987 and that is the guidelines we have used up till now. Uh, and continue to use, I should say. In 2015, staff uh, created and worked with uh, consultants as well to create the district plan, a new revised district plan. And it was endorsed by council in January of this year. However, it's currently under appeal. And in accordance with the Ontario Heritage Act, it is therefore not in effect. Uh, because it was endorsed by council, we wanted to use it as much as possible, understanding that, of course, this is the direction that the town wants to go. So we worked with the applicant to make sure that the proposal was as much as possible in keeping with this district plan. However, in the end, it is not fully in effect. Um, so one of the main differences that these two district plans have regarding the lot coverage can be seen on this slide. So if you look at the 2015 one, the intent is to be a little bit more strict in terms of lot coverage. So the wording is that the maximum lot coverage for main residences as well as accessory buildings and structures, including detached garages, shall be the maximum lot coverage permitted for properties in the district in the, under the zoning bylaw. So that's pretty clear. Um, we want to be able to meet that 25% lot coverage with the new district plan. Um, of course, considering it's not completely in effect, we looked at the 1987 district plan. And the wording in that one is, it is recommended that new building construction does not exceed the existing, ma existing maximum lot coverage. However, it is encouraged that new construction be consistent with neighboring existing buildings. So following those guidelines and the rest of the guidelines in that document, staff felt that the proposal was in keeping with the, these 1987 guidelines. Uh, and that is why we had staff's recommendation. Now, Heritage Oakville Committee recommended denial of the application, but this is the staff recommendation that the Heritage Committee originally saw. And so that is to uh, approve the demolition uh, of the existing house and the construction of the new house, subject to final details on brick, stone, roofing, windows and doors being submitted to staff for approval. Uh, and that's, those are pretty standard clauses. So I'd be happy to answer any questions, but that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Carolyn. There is a question. Councillor Elgar is first. Thanks very much for the presentation. It's mm -hmm. appreciated. Can you tell me how many square feet we're talking about this 3.6% deviation? Um, that I will have to see if we have uh, in the document. Just give me one moment. And, and while we're doing that, I'm just trying to understand, the gentleman mentioned that the, the house in the corner deviated by 4.9%. And was that under a different uh, timeline of years ago or was that uh, just approved recently? So through you, Your Worship, that one was approved um, in 2015, I believe. It started, the process started in 2014, um, and they were given a 30.5% uh, for that one. So that's the, we have it as going over by 5.5%. I think he referenced 4.9. Yes, I had in my notes 30, it was 30.5 in the end. Um, if it's the one I'm thinking about on the corner being... Um, 63 First Street, I believe. So, so he, okay, so that, that, that was a, quite a bit over. I see. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the square footage, I don't have um, the exact numbers, but I can tell you that the square footage of the house as proposed, the total square footage uh, is 3655, so 3655 uh, in terms of that percentage. I'm not sure what that difference would be. So it's probably two stories for sure. So you divide it by half for lot coverage. So you would have to take off not too many square feet is what you're saying. To meet, he would meet everything 
all guidelines if, if that if we accept uh, just a stay at 25 instead of 28.6 mm -hmm. if the house shrunk a good rainstorm and it shrunk we would have no no issues with that new house going up well, from a heritage perspective, and just speaking from the heritage perspective, um, we have, staff has no concerns with what they're proposing now, so if they were to minimize it or shrink it, as you say, we still would not have any concerns as long as the design was still compatible. Um, from a committee of adjustments perspective, I can't speak to that. So. Okay, so you would have, if it just shrunk a little bit, mm -hmm. you, have, you at, from a heritage point of view, would have absolutely no issues if it remains with the current proposal? And if it remains the current proposal, we have recommended approval as is. So that is our stance. So that we're just presenting um, our existing recommendation that we already gave to the Heritage Committee. That has not changed. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to. Uh, it, it is hard if one person's got a 5.5 percent deviation, the other person is lo looking for 3.6. To Councilor try Elder, to explain it. Thank you. I calculate the square footage difference. Uh, you know, come down to uh, the point you mentioned. They'd have to take 110 feet out. So they go from 36.55 to 35.45. But we, we, we should hear from the committee. The committee, of course, had a, uh, had a different view of it. So, uh, and I see a member of the committee now offering uh, to share their view. Councillor Duddick. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Um, we had a considerable discussion and we really were, um, wrestling with this one, given the fact that one of the key, what shall I say, um, problems that a lot on Heritage have had with the conservation district here is the lot coverage. We've been going bigger and bigger and bigger, and so we really wanted to remain firm with the 25%. I do acknowledge what Carolyn has said, that it isn't in effect while under appeal, but in good conscience, the Heritage Committee, under their heritage lens, could not endorse something above the 25%. And they did not feel it was unreasonable for the applicant to reduce it by 3.6. Councillor O'Meara. So I saw the different um, ideations of drawings. How many times did you work with the proponent to get that house to where it needed to be? How many variations of the drawing d did the applicant bring forward? Um, through you, Your Worship, I, in terms of main drawings, I would say there are about three, but there's also a lot of drawings in between there. So we worked between um, November and May, so November of 2015 till May of this year. Um, on the drawing. So, I mean, I can't speak to how many in between because the architect <laughs> may have had several <coughs> between each of those stages, um, but we had about three or four like larger iterations. Because that's my concern. I mean, it's not just, well, we'll find 100 feet here in a closet and it's taken, it, it's a redesign of a whole house. When e Even though you've got 100 feet here and there, walls have to be moved, load bearings have to be moved. It, so did we at no point in this process when we're going through there um, um, have this discussion about the new rules are this and we're going to strictly enforce them so that he knew what he was doing before he came to the Heritage Committee. Did we have that conversation? So through your worship, um, when we started the process with the applicant, it was November 2015, prior to the 2015 district plan um, even being completed yet and endorsed by council. So the process for this heritage permit application started before the district plan was even endorsed. Um, and then in the middle of the pre that, that uh, whole process, council endorsed the district plan, but it was immediately appealed. So we kept going with our initial uh, approach, or what you, if that makes sense, of the approach of the 1987 district plan, because that was the only thing that was ever in place throughout the entire process. And then I just take it the committee decided to use the 2015 one and, and hold the 25%, then I guess that's what I'm hearing. So, okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry about that, sir. Okay. Are there any others? Uh, Councillor Hutchins, and then I'll come back to you for a second time. Uh, yes. I, I, speaking from the committee's point of view, uh, I believe the committee felt that this was a brand new house. It could easily be designed to the specifications to keep it within the variances that uh, was being requested, so 25% was sufficient. 
Am Thank I? you, Councillor Hutchins. Councillor Elder? I wonder if the applicant that uh, came forward could, would, if we could ask him a question regar regarding where, where it stands right now and what he can do. Mr. Fernando, would you like to come back to the podium and let Councillor Elder ask you a question or two? Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for coming and uh, with staff explaining uh, to us also and, and also member, two members of council that were on the Heritage Committee. Would you be willing to sh shrink your house 3.6% um, on a square footage basis, which is hardly anything, and we could approve this with that if, if we put in that it would be a certain square footage? Um, the problem uh, we have is uh, when we designed the house originally, um, we, the, the walls were straight up and the heritage didn't quite like, uh, they want us to minimize the upstairs, the second floor. So we, if you look at the drawings and we have done, we have cut a lot of coverage now. And for us to uh, get that 3.6% out, it's about 320 or 30 square feet. So that's about one and a half garage that I had to take out. Um, and also I made a, um, a no, uh, my previous 4.9%, my neighbor, it was actually, Karen was right, it was 5.5% was given before. Uh, so I'm, we are struggling to get that 3.6% out and that's why I'm here today. If I can get that 3.6% out, I'm more than happy to do so. And, and uh, we work with the old rules and then uh, I was, uh, I had meetings with the Heritage Committee members uh, uh, numerous times and uh, I was told to work with the, uh, the, the design uh, and now I run into this problem after one year. So even after one year I can get going with the house because of this 3.6%. So I really want you to consider this. Uh, we tried, we, we really tried and it's a matter of me losing now like one and a half percent uh, of the garage. There's no other place where you feel you can do it. See, that, that's a concern because two members of, of our council sit on the heritage and they're, they're extremely knowledgeable of how, how, it, how it works. And I'm just uh, trying to think you, can, you could probably get moving a lot faster if you could just... And, and also I'd like to say some of the members in the heritage supported me as well and uh, for me to get 3.6%. Uh, and unfortunately, a few members didn't want to support me at the time. So, um, so I... <laughs> uh, I was there 24th of July and some members supported me. Just not the majority, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be here. I thank you. I, I was kind of hoping that maybe you would say, hey, I'll reduce it to this size and we'll make it. I, I can do it. Only thing is I had to redesign the whole thing. So far I have spent about $30,000 to do the whole thing for a year. And because I started in July and if I knew when I started that the new rules are going to apply, and I would have really done this, and I really want to obey the rules, and I will not go, but I went to 4.9% thinking that I will get that because the neighbor got 5.5%, but then I reduced from 4.9% down to 3.6%. So I never thought this is going to be a big issue. And now, because they're applying the new rules, my issue is the new rules are not in effect yet. So that's what I try to understand, uh, struggling to understand. Okay, I thank you. I think you know the, you know, I think you know the rules, and I think you, you know what Heritage told you as a majority anyway, so. Okay, I was hoping you would shrink it. Thank you. <laughs> Are there other questions? Did I see a sign over here? Councillor Adams. I, I just wanted to ask the applicant whether he had been aware of the 25% uh, rule when he initially purchased the property. Ms. Shepherd, do you happen to know the size of the lot in meters or feet? I'm sorry, uh, uh, Carolyn. That's all right. Um, let me see here. So the lot area is um, 777 square meters or 8,370 square feet. And 8,370 times 25% gives 2,092 
and a half feet for coverage. And uh, through you, Your Worship, th they're proposing is 2,390 square feet. So it is a difference of 300. And is that a result of um, a... Uh, so we cannot assume that the, therefore the upper floor is not the same size as the lower floor, correct? That's correct. We, we asked the applicant, as he was mentioning, to bring in uh, the second story a bit. And again, a lot of that was to do with the roof line. Um, we wanted to make the building have lower sloped roofs and not appear as so large. So uh, that was where most of the reduction took place was in the second story. And so do you happen to know the second story number? Um, yes, I do. The second floor is uh, 1980, so 1,980 square feet, and the ground floor is 1675. Wait. So that's opposite of what I, sorry. So that, that, um, Let's start that over. must be, just you looking had at it. 2,092 and a half. You, you had 2,390 for the ground floor, I thought you said. No, sorry, that's the footprint of the house. Right. Is I apologize. Ground floor, he has here 1,675 square feet. Yeah, uh, that doesn't make any sense because he has the upper floor is 1,980, which has more square footage than the upstairs. So I would assume that those were backwards. Okay. So uh, the lot coverage number is the sum of the two smaller numbers. Is that correct? The, so the lot coverage number, well, no, I'm looking at, um, that's the footprint, that's the lot coverage. So what I was looking at was the square foot, um, square footage of each floor, which totals 3,655 total square feet. So um, let's, let's go back to the size of the lot is 8,370. That's correct. And 25% of that is uh, uh, 2,092 and a half. And they have 2,390. So therefore... They're almost 300 feet correct. over. Yep, that's correct. And so the the bottom floor is 2390. We that's established, right? With the coverage, yes, it makes sense to me. So yep. then, one of your other numbers is the upper floor, right? That would make sense. Okay. <laughs> I'm going I, by I, the architect's number, so I apologize. Okay. If it's not all perfect. But, you know, earlier in the discussion of this, we were wondering, as a group, we were wondering, could we assume that the second floor was the same size as the ground? And, and what we've learned is that in response to requests by staff, the applicant reduced the upper floor, but not by quite enough to reach the rigorous 25% being asked by um, the Heritage Committee. And, and through your, your worship, just on that note, um, it did, the, the coverage was also reduced. It started at about 31%. He, they brought it down to, I think it was 29% uh, around there, and then ended up at 28.6%. Right. All right. Well, um, I, I understand, and I thank you for clarifying the numbers for me. Um, in the interest of fairness to the applicant and the unsettled nature of the existing regulation because of the appeal, um, I'm going to support the, uh, the staff recommendation on this matter. Um, I'm, not, I'm not asking anyone else to join me in, in, in this. I'm happy to be futile on it. But I just think that in the circumstances uh, uh, a little bit of consideration is owed to the applicant. When I hear how much uh, work he was um, uh, put to and, and apparently cooperated with doing, and uh, I think that should count for something. So that's why I'll be supporting, Council, that's why I'll be supporting the staff recommendation. Um, so, so, Mayor Burton, just to be clear, so you are moving. Uh, I'm not moving anything. Oh. The, the, the recommendation in front of you yes. is to back up the Heritage Committee, and, and if that passes, the matter is over. Only if that fails would there be an opportunity Got for it. someone to move the original staff recommendation. And, and um, I'm not expecting you to do anything more than a little Alamo here, but uh, that's, that's 
just in the name of fairness, I thought I would stick up for the applicant. Councillor Duddick. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you for your comments. I appreciate those. Um, this was not an easy one for us to deal with, as I say, but given the fact this is quite an issue for the Heritage Committee in regards to lock coverage, um, as I said previously, I can accept the fact that because somebody's appealed it, um, it's not considered in, uh, you know, current or whatever, or in effect, rather. But I cannot in good conscience say that, well, based on the fact he's tried a couple of times, um, it's interesting, there's a comment in our um, minutes, or in our agenda, rather, that heritage planning staff has pushed as much as possible for a lower coverage, and it's been reduced considerably from earlier plans. Unfortunately, it's still not meeting the target that the Heritage Committee wants. And unfortunately, um, this has been a bugabear for Heritage for a long time, where we've had larger and larger homes and more lot coverage of these lots. And given that his lot would appear larger than some of the others, he's already at a higher percentage, if you really want to look at it that way. So I will be moving the... Uh, that we passed the minutes as presented. Thank you, Councillor. And I certainly respect the work that the committee does, and I, I totally understand your position. Uh, are there other speakers, or shall I put the vote? Councillor Adams is a speaker. Then is there another? Councillor Elk. I've, uh, I've heard what uh, Councillor Dodek has said, and I agree with her, and uh, I will be supporting her motion. Councillor Elgar. Yeah, thank you very much. This is a pretty interesting one. Um, if I hadn't if I just found out that a, a one house right on, right next door was a 5.5%, not a 4.9% deviation from, from the standard, I, I would have stuck with the denial of this. But I'm having trouble based on the fact of how he's already shrunk the house. And to me, it is a minimal, very minimal difference, an awful lot different than the 5.5% that was just allowed not that long ago. So I will have to, uh, unfortunately, not support Councillor on this one. Thank you. All right, I'll put the vote then. Councillor Duddick? Yes. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion to approve the committee recommendation, please rise to be named. Councillor Adams, Councillor Grant, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Giddings, Councillor Chisholm, and Councillor Duddick, and Councillor Robinson. And to be recorded in the losing side, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Lischina, Councillor Lafworth, Councillor Elgar, Mayor Burton, and Councillor O'Meara. Uh, I declare Councillor Duddick's motion carried substantially. Um, the next item, Council, is item number 10, and that is the Livable Oakville Official Plan Review Council Subcommittee report, and that, I believe, calls on, uh, uh Councilor Elgar, do you want to say anything, do anything here? Yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Burton. Um, at a re recent meeting, not two, a meeting ago, uh, are, we are part of a Livable Oakville subcommittee related to uh, where we want to go in the future. And what we noticed is that in, a lot, in the goals of the, of the province, they want to make sure environmental sustainability is in there. And while we have it in our plan, it wasn't specifically a, pro, a separate goal that, we had, that was written. So staff took it under advisement from committee to work on it and report back and to uh, change the wording somewhat so that in fact our sustainability was at, at a higher level in our plan so that it couldn't be misinterpreted as not being there. So staff have uh, put together uh, a new study goal and they have reworded it for in page uh, 3 section 2.1 the study goal and this is as recently as 5.57 p.m. tonight if you're <laughs> if you want to read it and uh, there's both the steady goal and also both, uh, you know, it's about environmental sustainability. 
and I'm hoping everyone will support it. And uh, I'd like to thank staff for all the rewriting they've done a few times, and also for Mayor Burton for uh, a, f a few last-minute changes. And uh, I'm very pleased that that we have this high, it's front and center now about environmental sustainability. So I, I thank staff for that, and I appreciate everybody's uh, support in this two changes to our uh, Livable Oakville uh, subcommittee minutes. Thank you, Councillor. Any other speakers? Uh, in the circumstances, may I ask for a recorded vote on this? And would you please rise to be named to show your support? Councillor Lischina, Councillor Adams, Councillor Grant, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Lapworth, Councillor Elgar, Mayor Burton, Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Giddings, Councillor Chisholm, Councillor Duddock, Councillor Robinson, and Councillor O'Meara. I declare the motion carried. And, um, and I thank you for that, Council. It means we, we, uh, we get to end in uh, unanimity if we weren't always there during the meeting. Um, I now would ask for a, uh, a motion to rise and report. Councillor Robinson, thank you for that. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. I uh, rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on consent items 1, 2, and 3, confidential consent item C1, public hearing items 4, 5, and 6, discussion items 7 and 8, advisory committee minutes items 9 and 10, as noted by the clerk. And uh, I need a mover and seconder for the report. Councillor Lischina and Councillor Grant, thank you. It's good to be able to see your waving hand over there. All in favor? Opposed, if any, the report is adopted. Um, there, I have a small bit of new business. Does anyone else have any? Thank you, then, then I'll, just, I'll just say on your behalf how happy I was to see um, the Minister of Labor and Member of Provincial Parliament for Oakville return to Cabinet and the Cabinet Shuffle. And I thought it would be appropriate to observe that his record in Cabinet must have been a very positive uh, reflection on Halton because two more members of Provincial Parliament from Halton are now in Cabinet. And so where once we had none and then had only one, now we have three. And uh, as there's now 30, I think it's significant that Halton now has um, voices to the extent of 30 percent, uh, 10 percent of uh, of cabinet, and uh, and we congratulate Indira Naidu Harris and Eleanor McMahon for their ascension to cabinet, and um, and we thank Kevin for the example he set that inspired more to come from Halton, and uh, and I I know I speak on behalf of all of you when I say that. Could I now ask for a uh, mover and seconder of the bylaws? Councillor Knoll and Councillor Lapworth, as printed in the agenda. All in favor? Opposed, if any. The bylaws are adopted. That completes our agenda. It's been great working with you, and we are adjourned. Ooh.